Hello and welcome to another episode of the Theater Professor Vidcast. My name is Terry Dana Chikimiak II and I am the Theater Professor. We are continuing our series on Paint Storm Studio this week. Before we jump right into the fun and exciting times of throwing paint around on a digital canvas, I want to say a special thank you to those that helped to keep the website running. People like George and Mary and Kathy and ArtRage, all four who are my Patreon supporters. You guys are fabulous. And of course, all my patron members on the website. It is because of you that I'm able to keep this going and continue to bring you videos on digital painting programs, whether they be for tablets or for the computer. So you guys are fabulous. You're the reason I do this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now that I got my thank yous out the way, let's go ahead and start looking at what we're looking at this week, which is a combination of blenders and erasers. So first we're going to look at the blenders and you can see there's a whole host of them. We're going to start with the simple blender. Cool thing about all of these brushes is if you look up top here, it shows you kind of what should happen. So we're looking at the simple blender right now. If I take my simple blender in here, and I start to mix things together, pull some, there we go. And you can see we start to get a blend in there. One of the things you'll notice with the simple blenders, you've got a fairly hard edge on the outside. Doesn't pull really all that far off of the actual pigment itself, okay? The next one we have is a soft blender, which is similar to the simple blender, only instead of a hard edge, we have a soft edge. So if I come in here, let me bring my size up just a little more, and you'll see that the outside edges, I'm going to zoom in here, the outside edge here, fairly hard, the outside edge here, kind of cloudy. So that's the big difference between the simple blender and the soft blender. Next up, we have the extended blender. And what the extended blender does is it, if you look up here, it pulls much farther. So if I start here, I can pull it almost entirely into that green on the other side. Okay, then I could come over here and start mixing these two colors together. Now, more often than not, I'm just mixing like this. I'm just pulling the colors into each other. So it's not quite as important, but you can see it overrides. So I'm bringing in my blue and it's covering up the mixture. I'll do it down here so you can see a little better. We're creating a nice purple, but then if I bring this up, it essentially is pulling and covering up what was blended. Okay. So I'm essentially able to pull a different color in and cover up a color that I've blended. So that's extended blender right there, okay? And again, you can pull it out pretty far, which is nice as well. Bring it up there, bring my purple down. It almost gives it kind of a painterly effect, which is kind of nice. Next up, we have hard blender, blur hard. We'll come up here. Nice, hard, hard edge all the way around. Even harder than the simple blender. So those are like the four regular blenders. Well, what I'm going to call regular blenders. All of them do blending, but really when it comes to it, they do blending in slightly different ways. And remember, you can adjust these further by going into the brush settings and adjusting all of these. So for example, if we look at the simple blender, the extends color is at zero. But then if we go to the extended blender, the extend color is at 81. You could come in and adjust these however much you want. You create all sorts of different things. You could adjust, for example, the jitter of it so you get a little bit of chaos. You can adjust angles. So, you know, these are the preset ones. Don't forget that you can kind of play with them. All right, let's jump into Cloudy Blender, which should do, yeah, creates kind of a cloudy blend. Probably pretty good for watercolor. If you're creating a watercolor look, it does blend pretty nice. And the way it's it's using a custom form, so our hard blender up here, circle, all of the first four are using circle, okay? But then when we come down here, it's using a custom form, and that's how we're getting the cloudy. Now this is a soft cloud. There is a hard cloud blender. 
which is even more watercolory, which is again different from our soft cloud, which looks like this. Okay. Next up, we have the bristle br blender, and the bristle blender is kind of nice because I'll do it over here. You get these, you know, the feeling again of paint. Let me zoom in a little bit, and I'm just gonna cross hatch here. Blend it together. You can see we get we get the the texture of bristles along the outside edge, and sometimes in the inside depends on how you're mixing it. Okay. Uh, next up, we have a bristle flat blender. So we'll come up here, and it's you can see it's got a flat edge to it, right? It's using again a custom form. You can come up here and mix. It's almost like if you use Art Rage, it's like they're palette knives. If you're mixing with the palette knife. Okay. The next one is a hard, dirty knife blend. Come over here and mix a little bit. Again, flat edge, and depending on how I hold my stylus, will change the angle of the edge. But it has a dirty effect, you know, as if there was some gunk and grunge on your knife blade. Because, you know, sometimes we, we don't necessarily clean things all too well, do we? Hmm? Okay. Next up, we have a low feature blender. Bring this down a little bit. And it's, it's subtle. You can see there are, there's a bristly effect if you come to the outside. I wanted it so you could see that. Now, it's using the color that I have here. If I were to switch my color to white, you would see there. Okay, so it's 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 got kind of a a texture to it. Again, if I change my color here, you would see it's grabbing that color when I land on white and it's pulling it in that way. We have wet dirty, which it's a dirty brush and it's wet so things move it's using uh, you can see it's got a cool little custom form over here I really kinda like how this one blends now it stays dirty so if you notice that so if I'm up here right I'm gonna mix this a little bit there's a brownish there See how it continued over here? It's because it stayed dirty as I moved. Now, once I move in here, it's going to go away because I'm mixing it in with this stuff here. But now what should happen is if I bring this over here, yep, there's my pink. Okay, so you can kind of pull it. And your, your dirty mode's right here, and we're at 100% dirty strength. And then we have a pointed extender as our very last one. It's got a bit of texture to it. Tooth, you can see it there. Again, it's using a special custom form. Blends kind of hard. Really have to kind of play with it to get it to blend nicely. But it's got a nice texture. Let me zoom out. You can see all of the mixing we've been doing now. Now I'm using these fairly big. You might you know, reduce the size depending on what you're trying to create. You can see you can pull it out and pull it in. Okay, so we're going to use blenders to blend colors to, in our paintings, right? And the cool thing about this is our ability to adjust our blenders to however we want. And again, the, one of the strengths of PaintStorm Studio is not only be able to adjust our blenders to exactly how we want it, but then be able to save them in their own palette. So Definitely play with the blenders. See what you can come up with. Uh, it, the ones that I generally use, depending on what I'm doing, the simple blender is nice, right? Because it is pressure sensitive. So if I go light, I can blend really nice together. And then if I press hard, you know, you get a different feel to it. But I'm I'm more of, I'm, I'm a softy. I like to press it soft. And you create some beautiful textures.
You hear the squiggling of my Intuos pen on my tablet. There we go. Look at that. So I generally use the Simple Blender, uh, and and I like the Bristle Blender when I'm doing paint-related items. Like if I'm trying to create that painterly look, uh, it uh, and create some. See, I love the bristle feel. I'm mixing all my paints together. This could actually be a nice little background if I continued working on it, finished it up. What will probably end up happening is I'll just delete it like I do sometimes. I shouldn't. I know, I know, I know what you're saying. Okay. So that is the blending or the blenders. Next up, we have erasers. And the reason we're doing both of these is because the eraser is fairly small. Now, the eraser presets, the first one is a soft edged eraser. Oops, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. There we go. And you can see it's got a cloudy soft edge. It does erase completely in the middle. The second one is a sharp version of that. So hard edges. And you can see the difference between the two right there. Okay. So if we look, the first one uses a soft circle. The second one uses a hard edged circle. Oops. And you can see the difference here in our pressures and what they do. Next up, we have an eraser hard. So the difference between the two, if you look at the eraser sharp, if I go from soft to light, it gets small to wide. The eraser hard stays the same, and the pressure actually uh, is creates or adjusts how much eraser. So this is light pressure versus hard pressure. Whereas the eraser sharp, this is light pressure versus hard pressure. Okay, so one is affecting the width of the brush. The other is affecting the opacity of the brush. So eraser sharp and eraser hard. Next up, we have eraser transparency. And I'm going to do a bunch of undos here. There we go. And it's almost the reverse of building up watercolor. It's as if you're removing watercolor layer by layer. You know, when we when I talk about watercolor, the way you use it is you build up layers. You lay down one, then you lay a second layer on top of it, and a third and a fourth. Well, this is actually removing those layers, layer by layer. So it's voomp, voomp, and the more I go over the same spot, the more erasing happens. If I don't, if I then move next to it, you can see. Now, if I press hard, it will erase pretty pretty completely but we're looking at it as a erasing by layers and then finally the last eraser preset that's in the program is the grunge eraser you come in here and you got grungy erasing which can create some really cool textures let me take those all out we can come outside on the outside here And there we go. You get some really cool looks there. I'm going to undo that because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you that we're going to create our own eraser. We're going to go into the custom forms. We're going to find something that we like. Say, let's see here. That's the grunge section, the knife section, the leaf section, the tree section. Let's grab the dots. We're going to grab this one here and click just that single form. So if we do it right now, you can see what's happening there. Of course, we can adjust things like our opacity. So let's take our opacity down. There we go. Maybe, let's see here. Let's, let's increase our scatter a little bit. And so now I've created my own eraser, right? So it's a great way to come in and create some texture effects just by 
going through the brush, going through some of the custom forms, and you know, playing with it. The other thing you could do is you could come up here and you can change the blend mode. So let's do uh, screening. Now you're not going to be able to notice much with it right now because it is an eraser version. So most of what it's doing is just taking away paint. But, uh, you know, if you played with it a little bit, you could probably create some cool things. Go back into normal for now. You can come in here, you can adjust angle. I mean, there's there's a billion things that you could play with to create it and, and make it look different ways. So here's a different one. That little jittery, uh, let, me, let me take my scatter off on that. Okay, let's take my spacing down. Okay, let's change, let's see here, opacity, transparency, and again, this is erasing, so we're removing color, just kind of playing with things, uh, you could turn off, you could turn off all sorts of things, let's take our angle down, there we go. Let's take that angle down. <laughs> and there we've go. We've got, you know, this weird little I don't even know what it is, almost like a scaly dragon. Dun 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 dun. dun. So that's the eraser, uh, eraser tool. So we, we looked at the blend tool and the eraser tool. Next week, we're going to look at this right here. And some of the effects that you can do here are going to be, they're going to amaze you. Uh, then that's going to just leave us with a couple more. And we will be done with all the brushes here in PaintStorm Studio. I hope you're liking the videos that I'm doing here. If you, uh, if you do enjoy them and you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe. Become a subscriber on the YouTube channel. Enjoy what I bring to you and, um, you know, uh, share it with your friends. If you have friends, we should all have friends. I'm a friend. I, am, I have no idea where I'm going with that. If you have questions, definitely leave comments in the comment section below down there somewhere and finally if you're watching this on my website www.thetheaterprofessor.com remember that you can become a free member of the website all you have to do is hit the join button and you become an artist's member and uh, join our forums chit chat share your artwork it's kind of what we do it's a big community over there well it's not big but uh, for me it's big i like the community i like the people so uh, really excited about uh, the theaterprofessor.com so make sure you check it out that's it for this week and i want again want to thank everybody who uh, helps to support the theaterprofessor.com you guys are fabulous you're the reason why i do what i do all right my name is terry dana chikimak the second i am the theater professor and have a wonderful weekend